y'all, it's Kara. Today we're working in the new berry garden. I'm working on making this whole garden area behind me a new perennial berry patch. So far we have four raised beds in addition to a row of thornless blackberries and a row back there of blueberries. We're gonna be making more beds here in the middle in the coming weeks, but for the meantime, we're gonna work on planting some things in these beds. Currently over here, the only bed that is filled is this front rectangle shaped bed. Over here in this bed, we have raspberries and some strawberries. The raspberries are actually just starting to send out some leaves. Let me show you. You see the leaves? When these raspberries came in the mail, they looked essentially like sticks with roots attached to them and we planted them into the ground a few weeks ago. And in just a few short weeks, they've already started to send out some little leaves, which I'm really excited about. We love raspberries, so it'll be great to have these going and established here on the property. We have three different types of raspberries and I have plans in the future to add a few more types as well, if I can find them in stock somewhere. But that'll be for a future video. Some of the sticks have nothing going on yet. But a couple of them, there's some grass, a couple of them do have little sprouts coming out. This one down here has several leaves shooting off. It's really exciting to see. Around the edge of this bed, I've planted strawberries. A couple of the strawberries are already starting to flower too. The strawberries are planted right along the edge of the boards so that hopefully they'll kind of spill over the sides and the strawberry fruit will hang over the edges of the beds. Strawberries really multiply themselves quickly and act as sort of a living mulch. And so that's what we're doing today. We're mulching these beds here in the berry garden, but with strawberries. I'm gonna be planting strawberries along the edge of all of the beds here. This one has just a single row all the way around I might do two rows deep on each of the beds. Now strawberries will take over and kind of go crazy, but I like that because that means more strawberries. At least right now I like that. We'll see if I still say the same thing in a few years. One of the good things is because they do take over and kind of go crazy, I don't have to buy them again. Let me show you how many strawberries we have in the garden currently. Over here in our vegetable raised bed garden area, this bed, all that green stuff is strawberries. We transplanted strawberries from our original beds into this bed last year. And everything you see here pretty much is strawberry runners that has multiplied themselves last summer. Started off as just single plants on the outside and you can see it just took over. I'll leave the original strawberry planting video in the description box so you can see exactly how many we started out with. I want to say it was only 25 little starts or something and they've taken off and gone, gone crazy. They really love it here. So there's strawberries all in that L shape. More right here in this L next to our compost. Into that corner there. Then this bed here and this bed with all the green stuff around the edges. That's all strawberry plants. And I forgot, we actually have another strawberry bed section over here in the front. Right here, all that green there is strawberries as well. See, all that is strawberries. We currently have three different varieties of strawberries. Each of the varieties of strawberries are all June bearing strawberries. Strawberries come basically in like two main categories. You have June bearing, which produces all of its fruit in the month of June, kind of like it implies, sometimes a little earlier. And you'll have one really big crop of strawberries and then it'll be done for the rest of the summer. Or there's ever bearing strawberries, which will produce, you know, a couple little strawberry fruits here and there all season long. I picked June bearing. That way I could harvest a bunch all at once and make jams and jellies and preserves 
and strawberry pie and hopefully be able to freeze a bunch as well. With the Everbearing, you don't get a really big flush of strawberries. You kind of just get it sporadically throughout the whole season. Now, if you have as many Everbearing plants as you do June bearing plants like I do here, then you'd probably be fine and have enough to harvest for preserving and everything too. I just went with the June bearing. I may add Everbearing in the future as well. Now, as you can see, this bed looks like it's completely overtaken by strawberries, and it is. My sister-in-law actually came and dug up a whole black trash bag full of strawberry plants as well. So this isn't even half the picture. There was a lot more here just a couple weeks ago. So let's dig some of these up and go move them over into the berry garden. I brought my shovel out here to dig up these strawberries, but it turns out that they came up pretty easily on their own with just pulling gently at the roots. We have mulch wood chips all around our garden beds and they root pretty easily in that. I've got an entire bucket full now, so let's go transplant them. Honestly, this bucket's probably almost enough to do our entire garden. And as you could see, I didn't dig up that many. I just dug up a small little section, maybe like four foot by one foot wide. So that's pretty cool. We got a lot of strawberries to go around. In each of the holes that I'm planting the strawberries, I'm gonna put some berry tone fertilizer. This is the same fertilizer I used when I planted the strawberries originally and also when I transplanted them. And as you can see, they've taken off and gone, gone completely crazy. So I reckon it's working. So keep using it. You can see here what the plant looks like. Some of them, you know, just divide because there's actually more than one in there. But this is called the strawberry crown. Technically, when you're planting strawberries, you want it to be just covering the roots, not this crown portion. I haven't been that fussy with it when I've been transplanting and they seem to be doing okay either way, but we're gonna try to aim for dirt level right there, not covering the crown bit. But look at all these flowers already on them. Some of them actually even have little green strawberries already starting to grow, I noticed. So ideally I would have transplanted these before they started to flower, but now's better than never. slowly awakening the mountains are my only goal so I can shed my skin and be made whole in the crisp air and the red clay will be my salvation well your absence sets in with the early frost and the things that I've loved are the things I've lost from the chaff, the sheep from the goats this year I am becoming my own home this year I am becoming my own With strawberries I'm trying to get the roots to go straight down as best I can rather than flare out I guess you got swept in their migration and now every nest of come across. Let's go to the next bed. Before moving on to finishing all the other garden beds, I realized it was warming up quite a bit. So I wanted to go ahead and water in the strawberry plants as I plant them. I'm excited to plant up the rest of this berry garden in the next coming weeks subscribe and follow along to our channel if you want to see the whole berry garden making process. Strawberries are such a yummy delicious treat. My kids would snack on them for hours in the garden last summer and we barely had enough to bring into the house to freeze so I'm hoping this year we definitely will. And so far from the looks of it we will have enough strawberries to not only 
eat fresh and enjoy in the garden, but also preserve and put up for the rest of the year. You can see there's little green berries everywhere on these plants. They will be turning into beautiful red strawberries here before we know it. One of our favorite ways of eating strawberries is obviously fresh in the garden. But in addition to that, we really enjoy making smoothies. My family always loves a good smoothie for breakfast or lunch. And I wanna be able to hopefully put up enough strawberries in the deep freezer this year to be able to basically make smoothies all winter long with our strawberry harvests. Now I'll probably also make some strawberry preserves, jams, and maybe strawberry pie and things like that too. And of course, strawberry shortcake, that's a classic. I'm starting to think of all the different things I can make with strawberries. <laughs> I'm getting excited. What is your favorite recipe to use fresh strawberries for? Let me know in the comments down below this video what your favorite thing is, because hopefully I will have an abundance of strawberries and we'll need some ideas of different ways that we can use them up. That's the hope anyway. We'll be harvesting these strawberries here together in just a couple short weeks. So subscribe and follow along if you wanna see strawberry harvesting videos here in the very near future because I'm hopeful that we will definitely be harvesting a lot of strawberries this year. Lucy has been down by my feet this entire time, just cuddling and wanting some belly rubs and lots of snuggles. She definitely likes hanging out whenever I'm in the garden. She's a good companion to uh, garden with. Unless she's trying to dig into my flower beds, but I don't like that. <laughs> it is a beautiful evening. Like, I'm gonna finish up planting the rest of these beds and enjoy the beautiful sunset. God's good, I mean, look at that. Such a beautiful evening. I hope everyone has a wonderful day and I hope it's as beautiful there as it is here. And I hope your sunset this evening is just as gorgeous as this one. Thanks for watching. My name's Kara. Bye y'all.